it's May the 12th in 2020 and we're on the way to the cabin. It's a dry year, so I'm hoping that we can drive in this driveway and get within one mile of the cabin. Right now we're still three miles out, so all the distance we're clicking off is the less distance I have to carry that cart or haul that cart. You'll notice there's no crack in the windshield, but then I don't have the Durango. I, I've got Vani's Subaru Outback on this trip. It's gonna, it's got a lot more ground clearance, and so it's gonna allow me to go through some ruts that I couldn't even do with the Durango. Even if they're dry, a rut's a rut. This is where they logged years ago and really packed down the dirt. The trees never did come back. It's, that's what you get for summertime logging. Some of these rocks even here, the Durango would chip if I went too fast. You got some water coming across here. The trench I had to dig years ago to get it the swamp drain across the road. And when I put it in, the locals called it Martin's Cadillac Trap because vehicles would come up to this point on a pretty smooth trail and be going too fast and really hit it hard. But I think we're going to be able to push through here. I wouldn't do it with the Durango, but I think the Outback will give me just the advantage I need. The trail's in pretty rough shape. A little wetter than I thought it would be, but it's firm enough. And with the drang, the drango, I couldn't have done it. But the outback is light enough, and it just tracks so much better. And it's got a few more inches of ground clearance. So now we're through the worst part. One more little bad section later on, but it shouldn't be. It should be okay if this was okay. find that rake the last trip so I'm prepared now. Handles are pretty well shot but I got a lot of wood back here to fix them up. I had to shorten the cart up by about eight or ten inches to fit it in the, the outback, but still got plenty of room to haul a good load. Let the fun times begin. right. I ate two of Bonnie's world famous cherry pies on the way up, so all I have left in my snack box from her is a bag of cookies, and breads, oh, three bags of cookies. She even packed me up an easy roast beef and potatoes dinner for tonight, but I think I'll save that and just have the roast beef sandwich I didn't finish on the way up.
it's my first morning of a stay at the cabin and I decided to take the outback out and get it up on high ground and I got a good solid trail to leave from where I parked it because it's been dry but even here I don't know maybe the frost hasn't gone out of the ground yet but there's some pretty soft spots and when that rain starts pattering on that metal roof at the cabin I get nervous if I'm parked on the wrong side of these mud holes. I'm just out checking things out and came across where a beaver's been coming up here. This is some sort of a scent post. I mean the smell of beaver musk is so strong you can I could smell it when I got within 10 feet of this. Not sure what he's up to because there's been no activity on this pond for a couple of years, but we'll see what happens throughout the season. This old barn is disappearing more every year. The way it looks now, the first bear that comes along tries to scratch in for some insects or ants. It'll all be down on the ground. I've built a lot of these little forts around young white pines over the last 30 years. And I think this one is one of the ones with a really good success story. It's big enough now and healthy that the deer aren't going to eat it up if they come across it. I'm sure the seed for that white pine came from a cone that dropped out of this old brute just about 200 feet away. But every year it looks, well, worse and worse. Below that old white pine that's dying is a, a little, I'll call it a field. Just a little patch and one of the wildlife DNR people I was back here with years ago said, you know, if you got time in the winter time when things are dormant, shear that stuff off and let it regrow. And that's why it's all a nice even patch of deer browse. And there's some beaked hazelnut in there too, but I think it's about time to shave it off at the ground again and let it regrow into a nice succulent browse for them. I was on my way out to the bench in Hawks Pond to have a little tea and one of Bonnie's breads, but these trumpeter swans are between me and the seat. They've endured my presence. I'm only about 70 feet away from them. And I want them to get used to me though, so I'm just gonna sit here and I'll just back off. And I'm not sure if they'll wanna nest in this pond or not. They never have. They've always been over to the east, but with the water levels this year, this may be the spot.
I made mention earlier of not wanting to have my car on the wrong side of the mud holes. And we just had a really hard downpour come through here for about a half an hour. You can hear the roar on my roof. And it's hard for me to relax when that's coming down and my car's on the wrong side. So. Right as this hail started, I happened to be looking right into it, and it came down like somebody just taken a big basket of something and thrown it. It just it came down in one. All of a sudden, it came. It wasn't like a few pellets at one time. It was just a a wall coming toward the ground. And now that it's all over with, as I walk outside, there's a distinctive smell in the air and I all I can think is it's shredded pine and cedar, ne cedar needles that kind of got ripped open with all that hail.